Hello, Dragons. My name's Johnny Shimon, and this is my business partner, Annie Morris, and we're the founders of a breakfast business called Spoon Cereals. We're here today to ask you for £50,000 in exchange for 10% equity in our startup business to help take us to the next stage of our development. Finding a time for a healthy and tasty breakfast cereal during the week is a struggle for many people due to their long commutes on the way to work each morning. So Annie and I started Spoon Cereals around six months ago, and since that time we've been trading at food fairs and markets where we've sold our fresh pots where we can, but mainly our dry packs for people to take away with them. Not only do we use high quality ingredients, but we also allow our customers to build their very own bowl from our range of um, handmade granola and mueslis, which our customers can then top up with our exciting and fresh toppings. In the last couple of weeks, we've been running at a pop-up site in Old Street Station in the London Underground. The feedback that we've had on our products so far has been excellent, and we feel that business has a lot of momentum right now. We feel that there's a lot of interesting ways that the business can develop in the future, and Annie and I particularly would like to go down the wholesale route ultimately. So Annie and I are now going to make you up a pot of our granola with some banana yogurt, some fresh blueberries and some toasted almonds. A wholesome pitch from Johnny Shimin and Annie Morris, who want to transform our breakfast routine with their bespoke Eat on the Move cereal pots. Kelly, I know you're gluten intolerant, so we got you a gluten-free granola there. They're also hoping to break into retail by selling packs of their dry product to supermarkets. Duncan Bannatyne is first to question the entrepreneurs. Um, so what exactly are you going to wholesale? The dry packs, so the packs that we've just hand handed just out. Just the packs? Just the packs. That's all. So what, what's the point of um, these? Well, with this, this was the core concept to have a great tasting cereal that you could get on the go. And I think that we've come to the realisation that we can make a profitable business out of having our own sites, but it's never going to be super big. And we've decided to shift that focus going forward a little bit towards the wholesale market, because we know that, we know that there's a market for the product that, that, that we're selling. But you've got huge competition, haven't you? Absolutely. So how are you going to compete with them? We, we know that it's a crowded market, but it's also a very large market. You know, it's a, it's a market that's about £1.9 billion in the UK. The answer that we've had when we've had these, these debates internally is that we come back to the product that we're offering and the feedback that we get daily from people about the fresh pots. Can't you so, package this and sell it? And it comes and you take the lid off? We've had a lot of requests for that and, and it's something, you know, when I, when I mentioned in the pitch about interesting areas for development, it's again, we've had these discussions. It's, it's, there's, there's lots of areas where we think you could develop it and, you know, we have to think about the packaging and exactly what the right product is. Well, I had something similar to this for breakfast this morning and it was sent here by post. Okay. Uh, with, with the wet ingredients included in there? Mm. Okay. And was it good? It was very good. Okay. And that's your competition. A bad start to questioning, as Duncan Bannatyne highlights just what the fledgling company is up against. Now, Piers Linney wants to get personal and find out more about this entrepreneurial double act. So what's the story between you two, or the history, or the relationship? Um, so I um, have a background in graphic design and worked in advertising for a couple of years. Um, and then Johnny um, is my sister's boyfriend. Johnny works um, in private equity and he moved over. Well, you can explain, can't you? <laughs> so I was living in Amsterdam for the last six years and I moved back to London in October. So you out of the private equity investment fund? T totally, totally. Yeah. My, when I came back to London, I... Uh, so you made some money doing that? A little bit of money. A little bit of money, not too much. And you've backed this so far? So far it's been my backing, yes. And how much have you put into it? We've put in £25,000 so far. Uh, bank accounts running at about 8 k at the moment. And how are you living? at the moment? So we've both been on this full time since about January. Yeah. Um, so I'm living off my savings um, and also funding the, funding the business. And I'm living off savings as well. So money's going fast. Yeah, so we put a sort of six month runway on it to, to get the project uh, up and running. And I think that it might be that it needs a little bit more money at some point. But um, How long can you keep going? If no more money went into the business, then we'll probably look at another three months. 
So a product that is super healthy, but a cash flow situation which is anything but. Will Kelly Hoppen throw the entrepreneurs the financial lifeline they so desperately need? I love the name Spoon and the branding, but I think this business, to really make it grow and to be big, because I've been involved in another business very, very similar, you have to build the brand. You have to have a story, a book, other recipes. I don't think you can just make enough return just on a cereal. And I would not feel comfortable taking a percentage of your business because you're too small, I think, to be in the den right now. I'm not going to invest, so I'm afraid I'm out. Um, Johnny, Annie, um, you have got a very good product. It's a good brand, it looks good. Um, it's packaged very, very well. But it's a lot of work, not just making a profit from these products, but making a profit in the supermarkets anyway, because they squeeze your margin so hard. I know they're squeezing mine. So I wish you the best of luck, but I'm out. Thanks, Duncan. Thanks. I'm going to tell you where I am. I think it's a bit of a cottage business, potentially. So I can't see how you can invest 50K and make a return. I think where you can succeed is retail. And they're just going to hit, and you know, a shelf of this stuff. It's hugely competitive, um, and adding the value by the experience is great. But it's not actually a business, as, far as I'm concerned. So good luck with it, but I'm out. Thanks, Biz. Three dragons have declared themselves out. With only two possible investors still in the mix, it's crunch time. It's a really, really tough ask um, in what you're trying to do, and it's a big challenge. And I think when you then want to try and move into the retail space, you know, there are lots of companies that are, that are even struggling today. And I know how tough and competitive that market is. Um, but I think the branding's fantastic. I think I like Spoon, I like the cereals, I like the whole concept, but I think that you've done a really good job of packaging it and seeing this on a shelf, you can imagine at the end of a gondola, you can see where that, where that could go. So on that basis, I'm going to make you an offer. Um, and I'm, I'm offering it on the basis of the fact that I think I could do quite a lot because I've got a current team that work in this area with retailers, particularly with foods, and obviously with Levi in the background, this is something that is tied in very, very well with our experience with retail. Um, so I'm going to ask for a, a little bit more, but I'm going to make you an offer of 50,000, so all the money, but I want 30% of the business. OK, thank you very much. An offer, and one from a dragon with an impressive food portfolio to boot. But Deborah Meaden is still in, and she's remained tight-lipped throughout. Which way will she go? So, great news is, it's not complicated. It's lovely and simple. I can see exactly what it is. It's presented rather beautifully. I think the simplicity of this is lovely. Um, so I'm going to make you an offer, and I'm going to offer you all of the money. But I agree with Peter. I think it needs a lot of time in working out now, because you are very early on your journey. So I, too, would want 30% of the business. Thank you. Thank you. Can we have a couple of minutes just of to chat? Annie and I would like to ask if you'd consider working together on this for the equity percentages that you've talked about. So dropping to 15%? Correct. I wouldn't have any qualms about sharing it with Deborah because we're at 15% still. But you'd have to ask Miss Meaden. Deborah? Yeah, 
yeah, no, I'd, I'd be happy to do that. Well, fantastic. Yeah. We'd love to work with both of you in that case. Excellent. Thank you so much. Good. Thanks, Peter. Johnny and Annie have done it. They may have given away more equity than they'd planned, but they've managed to cut a deal with two multimillionaire investors. Thanks, guys. Amazing. I can't wait to tell my mum. <laughs> I think we're going to hear a lot about Spoon. You're going to leave out the spooning jokes? No, no spooning, brother. <laughs>